welcome to another edition of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day. Hello, and as the intro said, welcome to another episode of the Ice Talks. I am uh, your host, Harold S. Reed Jr., also known as HRJR, your motivational coach. If you don't know what motive action means, motive plus action equals results, and results equals success. You'll have to forgive me if I don't sound as hyped or eager or amped up as I normally sound, but as you all well know, we're going through some things right now. We're going through some things uh, as a community. We're going through some things... As a country, we're going through some things, I truly believe, as a species. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it because, well, quite frankly, none of us have any choice but to deal with it. And there are things that I feel about it that are just like genuine feelings that I really don't even think I can share because, um, <laughs> well, let's just say it wouldn't be very motivating. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been hard to muster up really within myself to energy to put forth another episode. Um, but at the same time, I have to not only be true to myself, I also have to be true to you. Those of you who take the 10, 15, 20 minutes out of your day to follow me or listen to these episodes, listen to my podcast, watch my Monday morning motive action videos if you follow me on Facebook, um, Instagram, what have you. Um... Last week on my Monday Motive Action, Monday Morning Motive Action video, it was the first week we really started shutting things down. I mean, my, my, I don't know about your kids, but my, my kids were officially out of school for, I guess, dot, 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 to be continued until, question mark. Um, but at the same time, I was very much still optimistic. I was still very much of the mind that this too shall pass, so we're going to be all right. That was the theme of last week's Monday Morning Motive Action video. And as I went through the day, helping with my son with his school and, and dealing with my you know friends and, and, and just dealing with people in the community that are experience, experiencing this thing on all different kinds of crazy levels, supermarkets, you know, just crazy. People hoarding toilet paper like, Toilet paper is worth gold. It's, it's crazy. And I, 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 I have to be honest with you. I found myself becoming demotivated. <laughs> it was really sucking the life and the energy out of me. But the more I thought about it and the more I withdrew into myself, the more I had to climb force myself to climb out of the funk that I found myself getting into. And I still have my moments. It's, this is, it's Tuesday morning now, but this is the start of the second week of everything being shut down and, you know, the kind of flexible shelter at home or shelter in place, what they call it, only go out for essential things like shopping and, You know, if you have to go to the hospital or take care of elderly people, visit family, what have you, you know, um, I I, I find myself at a tug of war and I'm sure I'm not alone. And this is actually where in which I feel we are truly a community where in which we are all going through the same things and we may all be having the same frustrations And we may all be dealing with it in our own special way or in our own unique way. And I am no different. But at the same time, at my very core, I have to believe that this is just another crazy ass thing that we have to get through and that we will get past and we will get beyond. So I say again, this too shall pass. And that leads me to 
what I want to share with you primarily in this episode. I've entitled this episode, The Power of the Process. And quite frankly, yesterday when I did my Monday Morning Motive Action video, that was the title. So I'm kind of reiterating this. So if you saw that video, this is kind of a reiteration of what you saw. Not word for word, because those videos aren't scripted, and most of the time, neither are these episodes. Excuse me. So, what I mean when I say the power of the process, the first thing I want you to understand is that everything in life is a process. Everything in life is a process. That's one. Two, All processes take time. So this is actually the formula that is giving me hope. This is the formula that when I find myself getting into a funky state of mind, this is the formula I tell myself. This is just a process. This is the process. Everything is a process and all processes take time. We have to go through the process of getting past this. But in order to go through the process of getting past this, we must go through this, you see. And that leads me to something else, to get more deeper into processes or processes. (laughs) Um, I have another formula that I use to further detail or define processes, and I call it sex. I get your mind out of the gutter. It's not S-E-X. It's S E. CS, which stands for we start something, we endure that thing, we complete that thing, and then we start something new. Every process in life follows this formula. All right. I guess if I wanted to, I could call it the law of sex, but then people would automatically think it's something different. (laughs) But everything in life, there's there's not one thing you've endured in life. There's not one thing you've gone through that you don't find yourself or you haven't found yourself or you, you could see yourself in a situation right now where you are involved in one step or another of this process. If you are married, you met that person, you got engaged to that person, you've married that person. And now you're living your life. So you started your you started your marriage. <laughs> if you're like me, you're enduring your marriage. And if you're true to your vows, till death do you part. But when that time comes, then that part of the process means, you know, you've completed. And then you move on to the next thing. If there is such a thing as the next thing. Well, the one who goes goes to wherever people go to that next level, if there is a next level. And whoever's left, they have to start a new life. In fact, life itself is that process. You are born, you live, you die. And if, in fact, there is another plane of existence, you start there. Think about it. School, your entire scholastic career from uh, pre-K or kindergarten all the way up into high school, through high school, college, uh, beyond, you know, college, you know, your, 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 uh, master's or doctor's degree, you you start, you endure, you complete, you start anew, right? You started elementary school, endured, completed, went to junior high school or middle school, started, endured, completed, started high school, endured, completed, started college, or went off into the real world after high school, or went off into the military, and maybe some of you are still in your military career, you're in the enduring process, part of the process of your military career, or you went master's degree, doctor's degree, what have you, all right, so every process follows this formula, and everything in life, every activity in life is a process, and all processes take time. So this is where we are in dealing with this uh, coronavirus novel, novel, novel COVID nineteen, whatever they call it this week. All right, and 
I, I, if I must urge you to do anything besides the whole wash your hands, social distancing, don't touch people, no, keep your distance, all this, all this, beyond all of that, I would say educate yourself as much as you can independently. Don't rely on the news. Don't, don't rely on the news completely. Let me say that. All right, because there are and and tell you the honest to God truth, don't rely on your friends. Some of y'all need to really social distance yourself from your social media. I can't tell you how many ridiculous videos some of my friends send me thinking that they're educating me. They're, They're putting me on game when I'm the type of person I need facts. I need you to substantiate who you got this video from and who the people that they're talking about in the video. I watched one video and it starts off with, um, I just want to share with you some information I got from my friend who, and this is a serious person talking in the video that you can't see their face because they just have some type of headphone logo or what have you. So you can't see the person who's talking to you and they telling, they giving you hearsay, they giving you secondhand information. You know, like, you know, this person or this person knows you and they're telling you, well, I heard from my friend. No. And then the one video I I saw, I started just Googling names. They said, Dr. So-and-so from Jing Bang University or whatever damn school it was supposed to be somewhere in China. I looked it up. The school been closed for five years. I looked up the name of the doctor or the professor, whoever that they referenced in the video And that person doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, when the name goes into the Google search box, all of the the, uh, search results that come up show me that fake news, false story, misleading information, misleading information. So I I, I want to urge you to be mindful of the, the information that you get. Be mindful of the information that you accept. And most importantly, be very mindful of the information you pass along. Okay, so everybody's talking about the wash your hands and the social distancing and the stay home. It helps and and the whole we're all in this together. Okay, let me tell you what they're not telling you to do. Okay, pay attention to the information and don't be afraid to do a little bit of research on your own. Find some credible doctors. Find one uh, find more than one source of 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 information to validate what you're reading or what you're seeing. OK, it's just like doing a research paper where you come across uh, one name or one topic that is involved in what you're already reading. And then you research that name and that topic in my first book, Find a Way to Make a Way. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. I have a chapter or a lesson called compound reading. And compound reading was basically my way of uh, reading a book. And if another book is referenced in the book I'm reading, I go buy that book and I read that book. I remember the first time I really did this, I was reading, um, I believe I was reading Unlimited Power by, by Anthony Robbins, by Tony Robbins. And in that, no, 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 it wasn't Unlimited Power. It was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Both books I suggest you get. They can, they can both change your life the way they did mine. But it was, it was Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was in the process of reading that. And he referenced another book called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Klassen. And I recommend you get that book as well. That book can also change your life. But I went and got that book. And I was taking turns reading both books at the same time. And I wound up finishing The Richest Man in Babylon before I finished Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book I got the reference for for, for, for it from. So I, I say all of that to say, vet the information that you're given. All right. Don't I mean, you could love the person who's giving you this information. But do you know where they got it? Did they do the research on their own? Can they substantiate the information? Can they vet? Can they prove the information that they're giving you is valid? Or are they just 
sharing a video in your DMs that somebody shared with them, that somebody shared with them, that somebody, you get in a 75,000 time recycled video. And, and there are things in these videos that feed into your fear. They feed into your prejudices and we all have them. We all have them. It's not about race. It's about human nature. We all have our prejudices and we all have, have our fears, right? So when these videos come out, these videos are made by people who are sitting in their homes the same way I'm sitting in my home right now, right? The same way I'm sitting in my home right now, recording this episode for, for the podcast, there's somebody sitting in the room somewhere, has a green screen behind them, a camcorder in front of them, a nice fancy uh, film editing program on their computer, and they're splicing together commentary and video and, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and, and <clears throat> putting together their own narrative, <clears throat> excuse me, that feeds into your fears, that feeds into your prejudices. And they say the things that you would want to be said to you to make you feel comfortable in your fears, to make you feel comfortable and justified in your prejudices. When in fact, we are just going through a process. The same way we went through the process of of measles, mumps, chicken pox, smallpox, Bubonic plague, SARS, Ebola, the flu. We're still going through the flu. There's no cure for the flu. There's a vaccine going around, and a lot of people say it make a, even my wife. Every time she used to, when she would get the flu shot, it would make her, it would get her sick. So she stopped getting the flu shots. I never got a flu shot. I don't think I ever got a flu shot once. You know, and I think I've only had the flu really bad, maybe. Three or four times in my adult life that I can remember. So I think I'm pretty good, (laughs) you know, but even still, I'm for the most part following the whole social distancing thing. I'm staying home. I'm, you know, I mean, most places I only go is a cigar lounge anyway, but I don't even go there now. Home. Why? Because I'm helping my kid because now I, I have to become an elementary school teacher. But again, it's all a process. It's all a process. And before I close on this, I want to go back to what I was just talking about because I want to make this point clear because this is what's really important to me. Please vet the information that you get, accept, and share. Please vet it for yourself. Just because somebody gives you the information doesn't mean it's true. I can't tell you how many times I put up a a goof on my social media and just because, you know, the, the, the first few lines is just wonderful, wonderful stuff, you know, and at the end, it'll say, I don't know whose post this was, but I was proud of them, so I thought I'd share it, but in the meantime, you go into the comments, and everybody's congratulating me and giving me props, and like, did you actually, see, you can tell who's not paying attention, and that's what's scary, see, you may think that Sharing information that agrees with your fears or that feeds into your prejudices, um, you may think that sharing this information with people who are of like mind, such as yourselves, is creating a greater sense of community, a greater sense of security. Hey, I'm passing this information on. Somebody school me. I'm going to school you. And you feel you have a greater sense of security because now we're all aware. I've, I've, I've shared this information with everybody in my sphere of influence, so now we're all aware. But if that information is wrong, all you've created is a false sense of security. And a false sense of security is no security at all. So that aside, please understand that what we are going through now as a community, what we are going through now as a nation, what we are going through now as a species, as inhabitants on this planet for a temporary period of time. Because it's all a process. This is just another process. We are enduring another process. And it looks dark 
Every time you turn on the news, 5,000 people just died somewhere. Do you show, they show you people laying out. I saw somebody posted a video. People laying out on the floor in the hospital. Now all of a sudden, everybody's sick. Hospitals are overcrowded. Everybody's sick. Everybody, you know, just, just tearing up the supermarket, fighting over toilet paper, fighting over water. This is ridiculous. It is truly ridiculous. Because if you just stop and think, we've been through so much to get to where we are now and start to fold. No, no. This is just a process. We are going through a process and we will complete this process and you know what? Five years from now, it'll be something else. It'll be something else. You know? Hey, there was a time when If you tested positive for HIV, your days were numbered, period, end of discussion. Then somewhere in the early, sometime in the early 90s, Irvin Magic Johnson announced that he was HIV positive. And here we are, excuse me, uh, 30 years later, and that man still living his life, living his best life, right? Then probably made a couple hundred million. In the past 30 years, living his best life with HIV, you know. So, again, we're just going through processes. What are you going to do with your time during this process? What do you, since we're all in the house, what are you reading? I've seen a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, I've seen a lot of people, and I'm just clearing my throat because my throat is dry. I'm not coughing. I'm not sick. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people post on various social media platforms, you know, since, since we're going to be in the house, what are some good videos, what are some good movies to binge on Netflix? You know what? I'm going to challenge you. What are some books you were going to read since you're in the house? You can go to the store. Bookstores are open. Barnes & Noble is open at your local mall, all right? Go to, go to the bookstore. Get a book. Or, or you know, uh, my wife... She devours audiobooks. All right. Do that. Feed your mind. Since we're in the house, feed your mind something. Now that your kids have to be at home and, and you have to homeschool, excuse me, quote unquote, air quotes that you can't see, but I'm putting them up. Distance learning. OK. Do some of that for yourself. Do some in home learning, homeschool yourself. Read some books on how to improve your credit score. Read some books on, uh, uh, you know, be some good books to read. Get get like uh, something like investing for dummies, stocks for dummies or something like that. Because even though the stock market is tanking right now, again, it's a process. It's the power of the process. The power comes from going through the process. Right. So the stock market is tanking. The stock market, is, listen, I sold out. I cashed out some shares of, of some of my stocks that had been doing great for quite some time. But with the stock market tanking the way it is, I don't want to turn on my computer, turn on my E-Trade account one day and be like $5, you know. So I, I, I cashed out. I, and I'm not worried about it because I'll build it back up because the stock market will climb again. We will get through this. We will get past this. We will endure and we will complete and we will start something anew. That is the power of the process. Trust me, you have what it takes. You know what you have to do. You know what you shouldn't do. So do what you have to do. Don't do what you shouldn't do. And let's get through this together. Never mind we're in this together. Let's get through this together. With that, I'm going to let you go. Wash your hands, disinfect your face or whatever <laughs> whatever you got to do. Have a drink. I think I'm going to have a drink before I go to bed. Yeah. I don't know. Ain't like I'm going anywhere, right? But no, in all seriousness, take care of yourselves. Take care of the ones you love. And let's get through this together. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day.